And here we are in the second part of your ecology lecture. And I, of course, couldn't quite finish my last few words in the first part, so I apologize. But we will talk more about it in class. Let's just get on to part number two here. We have now left the what we call unidirectional flow of energy. In other words, the idea that energy only moves one way through an ecosystem. It comes in as an inorganic form and it leaves that ecosystem, whether as heat or as movement or as some other form of energy. The energy comes in and the energy goes out. We're done with that idea. Now we're moving on to what we call the cycling of matter or the cycling of nutrients. In any given ecosystem and across the entire planet, guys, not only do we have energy moving in a, a unidirectional manner or in one way, but we have all types of nutrients that are essential for living organisms cycling constantly between biotic and abiotic factors in any any given environment okay so that cycling is what we're going to be talking about um, for the next few minutes here um, there's three different well there's really four uh, cycles that your textbook talks about the water cycle the carbon cycle the nitrogen cycle and the phosphorus cycle so these are three really really or excuse me four really really important things that living organisms need to live and they are constantly being returned from one form to another in any given ecosystem we're gonna start with the water cycle which undoubtedly you've learned of in other science classes before so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it but again the idea that we have this ongoing cycling where water is constantly changing forms and is returning to various forms um, over and over and over again in any given ecosystem. Um, there's a couple of important terms that we need to know here uh, when we consider the water cycle. So we'll just, why don't we start right here with the idea of evaporation. Evaporation is just uh, uh, water that starts as a liquid form. So down here we have liquid water and that liquid water is turning into a gas, which means that it is um, uh, rising into the atmosphere. It's changing form from, from liquid to gas. That is the definition of evaporation. Um, kind of along the same lines of evaporation this process right here is a little bit more significant when we talk about biological uh, organisms and when we study biology um, this is a process known as transpiration and transpiration is just a fancy word for evaporation but transpiration is evaporation that is happening from plants so it's uh, liquid water that's in plants changing to a gas and then that gas uh, form of water that water vapor rising up into the atmosphere so transpiration is really the same thing as evaporation but it's just specific to uh, liquid water from plants changing into a gas and rising uh, into the atmosphere from plants then we also have condensation the idea that that uh, kind of gaseous form of water is now starting to the the molecules are getting closer together and it's kind of getting closer and closer to forming a liquid again um, and we see that kind of manifest itself as clouds in the sky and then of course we have precipitation where that liquid water can then return to the planet um, in forms of rain and snow and sleet and all the types of ways we know water falls from the sky um, all that liquid water then runs off down into reservoirs those reservoirs are rivers and lakes and streams and that runoff eventually takes us back to large bodies of water like the ocean where massive amounts of evaporation can happen again and the process repeats itself really the big takeaway here is this idea of transpiration um, which is evaporation from plants then we get into what we call our nutrient cycle. So a nutrient is really just defined as any chemical substance uh, that uh, a, a living organism requires to stay alive. And the first nutrient we're going to be talking about here that cycles through an ecosystem, kind of like water, but not like energy, can't emphasize that enough, is carbon. So this is kind of a look at the carbon cycle. It's not a nice round wheel like we saw in the, the previous picture of the water cycle, but there's some really important things going on here with the carbon cycle that um, we'll address. So why don't we start with carbon in uh, the form of a gas in the atmosphere trapped in carbon dioxide. So hooked up with two oxygen atoms is a single carbon atom. Um, and why don't we start there with uh, carbon's journey here? Well. During the process of photosynthesis, that gas form of carbon enters into the living world. 
That's how producers, like plants, during the process of photosynthesis, take carbon into themselves and take that gaseous form of carbon um, and start to make uh, other forms of carbon that other living organisms can actually tap into. Okay, uh, remember that not plant not only do plants perform photosynthesis. Plants aren't the only types of producers, but algae and phytoplankton and and types of bacteria. Um, these are all examples of organisms that can perform photosynthesis, which means they can trap carbon that's in the atmosphere in themselves and then be able to pass that carbon along to other organisms. So here we have a producer like a plant trapping carbon from the atmosphere and sure enough when that plant gets eaten by something like a primary consumer this is a term you should know from the previous lecture then not only is the energy flowing into the primary consumer by the way only 10 percent of the energy you should also know that the rule of 10 from the previous lecture um, but the carbon itself is actually moving into this primary consumer. And then when that primary consumer gets eaten by secondary and on up the ladder to tertiary and quaternary consumers, et cetera, et cetera, not only is the energy being passed along, but so too is that initial source of carbon. Now, when these organisms die and they fall to the ground somewhere, they are consumed by decomposers. And I told you in the last lecture, the decomposers have a very important role in ecosystems, and that important role is returning not energy through the ecosystem, but other important nutrients. So decomposers will take these uh, organisms, which are full of carbon now, and when they die, they will decompose those organisms and release their carbon into uh, uh, kind of the soil. So we have the soil down here, and that carbon is kind of being released back into the soil. Well, sure enough, then um, that carbon uh, can be uh, released from the soil um, and it can be kind of breathed out by those decomposers, those organisms that um, uh, that originally kind of decomposed these these uh, dead organisms to start with um, that carbon when it's trapped in these organisms when they're living can be breathed out so we have now all of this carbon that was once trapped in living organisms kind of escaping and sure enough all of that carbon leads right back into its original form in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide Okay. Now there's one other way that, uh, or one other thing we want to talk about here in the carbon cycle, and it's that if these organisms don't get decomposed right away and they lay underneath the soil for long periods of time and they experience high amounts of pressure, they get turned into what are known as fossil fuels. And fossil fuels are what we rely on as humans to obtain a lot of our energy today. And when we burn fossil fuels, we are doing nothing more than taking carbon that initially came from carbon dioxide that was trapped in plants that was passed on to primary and secondary consumers on through an ecosystem. We're taking all that carbon that was trapped and never actually got decomposed by decomposers and we're burning it. And when we burn it, we release that carbon right back into the atmosphere where it originally came from and we start back again at a carbon atom trapped with two oxygen atoms. So the cycle, the carbon cycle, lives on. And then the final cycle that um, we're going to talk about, even though the phosphorus cycle is kind of mentioned in your textbook, and you do want to know a couple things about the phosphorus cycle, we'll talk about them in class. But the only other one we're going to spend really time on here in this lecture is the nitrogen cycle. So nitrogen, like carbon, is another important nutrient that other uh, that living organisms need in order to survive and is constantly recycling itself through any given ecosystem. So first of all, let's talk about atmospheric nitrogen. Just like we talked about carbon in the atmosphere is carbon dioxide, well, nitrogen Nitrogen is also present all the time in the air around us. In fact, it's one of the most abundant uh, elements that's in our air supply. Nitrogen is, or I should say, over 70% of our air is composed of nitrogen. So it's everywhere. And it's in the form of these N2 molecules. So it's two nitrogen atoms bonded together. Well, the tricky thing about nitrogen is plants desperately need nitrogen from the soil in order to grow. It's an essential nutrient plants need to grow. And we've seen from previous lectures that plants or producers are critical for the establishment of higher levels of uh, or, uh, organisms that are higher above them in the ecosystem. For an ecosystem to thrive and survive, um, plants got to be got to be doing their thing and they need nitrogen to make that happen. Okay, so the problem here is unlike carbon dioxide, right? When we have CO2, like we just talked about in the atmosphere, plants can directly take in carbon and use it uh, in the process of photosynthesis. But plants do not have the machinery to take in nitrogen. This is not something that plants can do. 
So we have a bit of a situation here. Okay, luckily for us, there are certain organisms that live in uh, the earth, in our soil, that can take this atmospheric form of nitrogen and turn it into a useful form of nitrogen um, in the form of ammonia which uh, will eventually turn into these other kind of slight offshoots of nitrogen compounds known as nitrates, or excuse me, nitrites and nitrates. So they just have a slightly different chemical composition. Okay, But this whole process of taking atmospheric nitrogen and turning it into nitrogen that's actually usable by plants. So we can have this process right here taking place. We can have this plant uptake. The process of making unusable nitrogen into nitrogen that can be used is known as nitrogen fixation. Okay, And there's these symbiotic relationships that are really cool that exist between some microorganisms that live in our soil and the roots of plants. And basically these microorganisms have the ability to fix nitrogen and that just means turn the unusable nitrogen into usable forms of nitrogen and then the plants can take in that usable form of nitrogen and use it for their own processes. So nitrogen fixation is that process of taking the unusable nitrogen from our atmosphere and making it into these usable forms of nitrogen that our plants can then actually uh, uh, uptake for themselves. Okay. Then we kind of have the opposite process that you need to know about, uh, known as denitrification. It's shown right over here. Denitrification is kind of the reverse. Denitrification is taking these uh, nitrogen uh, compounds that are now in our soil and turning them back into gaseous nitrogen that can be released back up into the atmosphere. So we have nitrogen fixation, which is taking nitrogen from the air and making it usable for plants. And then we have denitrification, which is taking that usable form of nitrogen and remaking it into uh, the gas form that can be in our atmosphere. So again, it's not a pretty wheel and a pretty circle like we saw with the water cycle, but there is some very, very important things going on here in the nitrogen cycle. Oh, and I almost forgot. Um, it doesn't stop with the plants. When the plants uptake this usable form of nitrogen, obviously then things that eat plants uh, get nitrogen into their bodies as well. And then once again, when these things die, sorry cow, when these things die and they fall to the ground and they get decomposed by decomposers, not only are they returning carbon to the soil, um, like we saw in the previous slide, but their nitrogen goes back into the soil as well. And again, the cycle can repeat itself. So there's lots going on in these pi uh, in these pictures, in these diagrams. Don't get me wrong, I totally understand that. But if you just spend some time kind of looking through them and seeing how, in fact, these nutrients cycle through an ecosystem where energy just moves in one direction, you will be well on your way to understanding the, the key concepts for this week. So that's it. I made it, I think. Yes, I made it. We can celebrate. I made it through uh, a lecture in less than 15 minutes, and I'm going to stop talking now. Enjoy.